Yeah, my name's Jeff Hazlitt. I uh, played at number eight, and uh, I was six years with Billericay. When did you first realise you could play football? Oh, in the early 50s. Uh, I was a Hampshire born and bred boy. My father played in goal for Portsmouth, um, and obviously, naturally, uh, uh, he encouraged me to start kicking the football down in, in, in the garden and in the fields, and uh, I guess it was, yeah, sort of uh, when I was four or five years old. Great. Okay. And what was the first kit you owned as a kid? Well, I don't think kits were really as prominent as what they are in today's world, um, but I'm sure it would have been something associated with uh, Portsmouth, um, because they've never stopped having the Britvic logo on their shirt, even now. Um, so I, I assumed Dad would have put a blue kit on me. Okay. How did you get to play at Billericay? How, how did you come across Billericay? Well, it was uh, mid, uh, mid-20s mid and uh, I moved up from Hampshire having um, been involved in civil engineering all my life and construction. And uh, you get moved around the country. Um, I got to uh, um, Brentwood and uh, I had been playing for... Um, Ipswich, um, and then moved down to play with Harwich and then Tilbury and Hornchurch. Um, <clears throat> and uh, business started getting uh, a little bit busy. Uh, and then I got a call from the, uh, from the man who uh, managed us for a few years, and I s- he explained that they only play in Essex, and I thought, well, that won't be too bad to uh, travel around. Um, my yard's always been in Highwood, Chelmsford, and uh, yeah, John called and said, come and play with us. And then uh, uh, the great thing about it was that when, you ac- when I actually got here, it wasn't as if they were just loads of layabouts. There was, you know, quite intelligent people, stockbrokers, um, <laughs> computer whiz kids. What was the ground like in those days to, to play on? Well... It was um, very rough, up and down, wet, boggy, and it was a challenge. And having just looked at that one out there, um, I was going to use my putter and try and score uh, from the halfway line. But, uh, yeah, it was a tough pitch in those days, Um, you know. Where were you living when you played Billericay? And and how did that, what was the work? Yeah, were you living in Billericay and were you working in Billericay? I was living in Wyatt's Green, uh, Doddinghurst, which is just only 15, 20 minutes from from the ground here. Um, But I was working all round because construction takes you uh, wherever the construction industry wants you to do something. Um, So it wasn't too bad uh, because being sort of the owner of the company, I used to be able to work out when I needed to be here and be there. And that's, that's how it all sort of worked. So it did gel okay. The, the question is, do you remember any pay or bonuses or privileges? Well, uh, I didn't get any pay because uh, I was okay. And John, we had a very minimal budget and uh, we managed to utilise it for the guys who could do with a little bit more money. I did take the two bonuses when we won the, uh, the final because it was a, you know, you should take that because everyone's got that. So that was great. But no, I wasn't interested in... Pay, playing for money, really. Uh, I, I think I was saving enough up. Can you remember who were the rivals at, at the time of, of when you were playing? Um, many rivals. Um, Asen was the, the most lo- local team uh, because uh, being only down the road, and they used to raise their game because most of the boys in our team knew the boys in the Basildon team, but you know, they were never up to scratch for us, really. And I, I think our record probably was well into the 90%. Uh, so uh, it was always a great battle. Great. The Battle of Basildon and Billericay was always uh, renowned, I think, in the in the South End Echo or Gazette, whatever they call it. So how did you prepare for a match day? Did you have a special sort of high-protein diet or did you just have sausage and eggs? Just breakfast. Just breakfast, normal breakfast. There was no... Uh, it was uh, there was um, 
There was no protein diets in them days, Paul. You, you ate what you could, uh, what you could get your hands on, and uh, that would have to do you for the day. Do you have any vivid memories of any particular match? If, if you said, "Oh, can you remember one match?" What, where would you go? Bang! Yeah, I remember this match once. It might be that Sunday night, uh, but if you, yeah, let me know. No, that wasn't the uh, the classic. I think the classic was, uh, um, it was the second leg of the of the Vars final when we we were playing Farnborough and uh, they had beaten us. 2-0, or did we draw at Farnborough? 2-0. Right. And I was actually in the box, because Mr Newman, for some unknown reason, didn't need a heavyweight in that game. Anyway, we lost 2-0, and I'm champing at the bit, really. But when we come back here, I was in the team. And the first goal, I think, came from a corner, and I managed to hit the keeper, the centre-half, and someone else, and before we knew it, it was 1-0, because I had it in. But that disposed of them. And then I think it was Ricky or Freddie went on and got three more goals. Uh, and we finished up 6-0 winners. And that was phenomenal when you considered the game that they'd put together at uh, Farnborough and the way we recovered to win 6-2 on aggregate. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was great. Did you keep relatively uninjured or did you, did you have any problems playing? And no, I, I was very lucky. I don't think I got injured. I th oh, I, I did get a scar down in a, se a semi-final oh, of one of the games against Hungerford. Um, someone, unbeknown to me, must have put their studs up against my shin pad, went through my sock and shin pad. When I got into the dressing room at the end of the game, we beat Hungerford 2-0 that day, I think. Uh, and I thought, oh, I thought my leg's bleeding. But, you know, I didn't really actually feel anything. So I was, yeah, a bit lucky with uh, getting a knock. Uh, what was the main stick and banter you got from your lovely fellow players? Um, what was I eating for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> and are you going to take us out for lunch before a game? Uh, but yeah, it was just uh, it was just great banter. It, there was a good uh, atmosphere amongst it, all of us. Uh, any any individual players or role models at the club that you had that most respect for? I did. He, uh, he was like a mouse, but Stevie Bone, in my opinion, was just quite incredible. He never stopped running, and I often had to ask him if he had a spare airbag, because uh, uh, he, he was up and down, in and out, tackling. Um, he, he was just a legend, as far as I was concerned, in the amateur world, because I don't think I've ever played with anyone that was as uh, um, like, like Steve Bone. Yeah. So the fella, the players here. If we go through, if I say like JP, what was what was JP? What, how would you describe JP as a player? Uh, well, I barely saw him because he was too quick. It was a blur, um, and I used to just hope that once he got down the wing, uh, I could then focus on the ball, and then yeah, I would invariably try and knock it down to Fred, who was always alongside me, um, and we would score. But uh, yeah, he was a bit too quick for me, so I never. Never challenged him in the 100 metres, for sure. What about uh, Dougie Young? Well, I didn't really play with Doug. Doug came in after I said to John that I, I will have to stop now because uh, uh, business was too biggie. But uh, having seen Doug play and the way he'd uh, nicked a few goals, I, I think I did see him play because he played against us at, uh, for Brentwood. Um, but we... Um, I've got to say, we were a great team, and, and Dougie probably was just a little bit... He was held by probably like someone like Mickey Payne, who was a thug, and he would have Doug would have worried, worried sick that he was going to get kicked all over the place. So he probably didn't want to really play that game. So he probably went out on a wing and just sort of hid. So he wasn't going to go, go scoring goals like he would normally do against any other team. But, uh, yeah, we were very lucky with different people doing different jobs, and they all did them very well. Well, he's a, he's a skipper of uh, a great delight to uh, to work for. He he encouraged everyone. He managed to speak to everyone. I'd played with Arthur at Hornchurch, um, and he uh, uh, he was just a person to get the team together and motivate them. And once he'd start, uh, once he'd done his bit on the pitch, and then John was a great motivator, and he knew what he wanted out of the players, and Arthur carried that on. Ready. Freddie was uh, a legend because uh, 
I could rely on Fred being the faster of the two up front. Um, and as long as I got the ball in front of him, then goal was the word. Can you remember, we'll just go back to 76 then, the first, the first run, can you remember any, any of the matches leading up to the finals in a kind of a nutshell, not, not too, uh, too much length? No, that one with Hungerford, where, as I say, and the, and the Farnborough one, of course, because we played them, pure coincidence, two semi-finals, they must have dreaded it. And, and, and John and I knew the manager very well because uh, he, um, he was uh, managing a team in Hampshire where my father was the trainer for a little while but um yeah uh other than that no I, I don't really think there were too many other games okay fine um on to the finals so let's take the first one um can you remember what you did from waking up and how did you get to Wembley? waking up was just normal i just didn't you know I, i'm a great sleeper i'm still a great sleeper now um so when i woke i woke uh breakfast and uh, there was a buzz and a uh, little bit of motivation from John starting at probably nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, and the skipper, he was, uh, he was as bad. Um, and we just jumped on the coach and off we went. Uh, we weren't allowed to bring girlfriends on. You remember pulling up to Wembley and did you go through, through groups of fans? Or? There were fans there because um, like Wembley Way, in those days was pretty dormant now you go down there and there is blocks of flats after blocks of flats after blocks of flats it's like going through a ghetto to get to Wembley now isn't it uh, but in our days yeah there was people really um, enjoying the day out and uh, yeah there was flags flying and uh, walking or when the bus turned up to where we got off uh, yeah that was was a bit emotional as well did you, what was it like walking out of the dressing room onto the pitch? Oh, well, every, 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 person, every footballer's dream, whether you're an amateur, amateur footballer or a, a pro, you know, there's quite a few friends of mine who have been pros, they've never been to Wembley. Um, so, yeah, that's how, uh, that's how tremendous it is. Yeah. Okay, so you scored in both finals, didn't you? Didn't you? Yeah. Um, Talk us through the, the first one, just Stanford, wasn't it? Um, yeah, just your match in a nutshell, including your goal. Then. Well, it, it was a bit of a... We counteracted each other. Um, and uh, so it was a bit of a battle and got to extra time. And then uh, Gary Smith laid a perfect ball off. And I still remember hitting it. And it... Uh, it's better than Harry Kane and all them Tottenham mob that score there now. So, uh, yeah, that was enough for us. And uh, that was our win. So, yeah, final minutes, referee blows for full time. What happened to, with, you, with you? Well, we all mobbed each other. That was enough. Um, we'd won. Uh, I still remember my dad being there, my brothers and lots of others. And as you went up and, and got the trophy, of course, um, they were in view. I had a good eyesight then. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was just, just emotional. So what, what was the presentation like? You walk up the steps, weren't you? Well, you got the steps a bit, uh, a bit shorter than what they are today, so that wasn't too bad. Because, believe it or not, that pitch... Did take it out of us. It was uh, it was nothing like today's pitch. It was uh, quite tiring. Um, but yeah, going up the steps, getting the getting the medal and the dong, and coming back down, and then it all went off, didn't it? So uh, couldn't have asked for a better ending to the day. <laughs> yeah. So did you? I remember football was having a pint of milk at the end. I always used to think, oh, I can drink a pint of milk. Was there champagne on the pitch? What was the party like? Um, I don't think there was any champagne on the pitch or anything like that, like they tend to do a few night today. Um, I'll have enjoyed my pint of milk because I still enjoy a milkshake now. I'm not, I'm not, I've never been the world's greatest drinker. I can know how to eat, but I was never a great drinker. Um, and I'm sure 
the, the guys that uh, were allowed in the dressing room would have probably um, drunk some champagne. They, they might have a better memory than me. Um, JP's younger than me, only about three or four years. But, uh, <laughs> but no, I can't remember uh, uh, getting... But then when we obviously came back, I think we stopped uh, on the way back down the A406, the old North Circular. We, did we stop in the pub? I think we did. Um, or did we not stop in a pub? No, I don't think so. Oh, are we, we came straight back, did we? We might be thinking of Nottingham. No, I thought we stopped down the uh, A406, uh, um, the old North Circular Road, just by Brent Fly over there, but maybe not. Senior moment. Okay. Uh, right. The Sheffield, the Sheffield match again, how it went for you and about the goal? Um, we were we were nil nil, and I, was it Freddie? Did you score the first goal at Sh at Sheffield at Nottingham? No, it was Billy. Billy Bingham. Billy Wood. Billy Wood. Oh yes, that's right. And then uh, it, more luck than judgment, but um, the ball bounced fairly quite a distance out, and I uh, the second goal, I swung my left foot at it, and it. It was one of those that absolutely uh, hit it pure true. Nothing like a golf club these days. I wish I could hit the golf club as true as I hit that. And it just fizzled into the top corner from a, a good distance out. Uh, and then we managed to uh, maintain uh, the stability of the team. And I think they nicked one just towards the end. Um, so it was 2-1. And that was good enough to uh, retain the title. Okay, what about the Wembley match where it was won? Um, yeah, it was a bit stale. There was nothing really exciting there. Uh, I can't remember much of it, really, because I think you only remember winning, don't you? Yes. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, any souvenirs from the day? Medals, keepsakes? Oh, and the souvenirs. Um, everybody was prepared to give you this, give you this. There's, yeah, there's a little bag there, uh, which my dear wife managed to fine from upstairs grandchildren don't stop looking at them I don't look at them then because I was a lot younger so uh, yeah, but it's it's in a bag there for you to have a look at um, yeah great uh, what did you think of the Bill Ricky fans and is there any is there any memory where you kind of might have interacted with them we interacted with them or certainly a certain uh, number because they were with us all the time uh, backing us, uh, they were on the coach. Some of them, they had uh, real, uh, I've got to say, head cases, funny, and and they they motivated you. Um, and still to this day, there's several of them still around, which is lovely. Uh, and they were sort of uh, as much as legends as us, really. Uh, yeah, they were just uh, um, just phenomenal people. So, what's your most prized memory from from playing at Billericay? Well, we were the two Vars finals. Um, you know, we, we we did very well as a team at Billericay. We didn't lose many. Um, and, uh, yeah, the Vars the have got to be in the, the top, haven't they? Um, and you must tell me that anecdote about this tournament getting covered and the free kick and you're sending off in your own words. Well, I was running a bit late that night and I think I'd phoned John and... He said, OK, I'll have to put you on the sub if you're not going to get here in time, because it was traffic, and I think uh, something like that. Anyway, I sat on the subs bench with the other boys, and Dave, uh, Emmerich, and Harry, uh, the sponge man, and John. Anyway, uh, we scored. I think Freddie scored. Did you score, Fred? At the you Clark had, final? It was Arthur. Was it? You, Arthur? You had your problem before... Oh, before you scored? Yeah. Oh, was that? Oh, I thought we were one nil up. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah, this fella Hurley, who was always a bit of a thug, because he was at Brentwood. Uh, he must have learned Doug had to be a thug, because um, Doug, he was a... Uh, um, and uh, he went to uh, Basildon, and we come up against him, and really I didn't think I feared too many people in the game. Uh, and he knocked uh, our fella over, and dislocated his shoulder. Um, 
which we didn't know about until a bit later. Uh, so Don sent me on to replace him. And I thought, you just hit my mate. It's a problem for you coming. And the ball come up in the penalty area and it was just perfect because I managed to flick my head to give him a little bash on the nose. And as he was falling down, I managed to be in a bit of a ballet, ballerina uh, at, at sort of up the front. I flicked my boot and caught him right in his nuts. And he went down like a disabled pig. Um, and the referee walked up and he put the red card to me straight away. But then he gave it to Hurley because of the damage he'd done to the tackle before. So I went straight off in, I don't know, a minute and a half, I suppose. And I ch it was handy because I hadn't had time for a shower. I whizzed into the shower and my mate was in there having a rub down, Lester, because he'd played nearly half a match. And I tapped him on the shoulder and he said, what the f*** are you doing here? He said, I said, I got him for you. Uh, and that was really the end of that one. And we still won the Clark Trophy. Uh, I was pleased to, to win. Um, Brilliant. So in 100 years time from now, how do you want to be remembered? Um, just as a Billericay player, as successful as the team were, and be just being part of that team. Um, it was a great team. Uh, and you can't forget that. As I say, you, you'll forget the little games. You I couldn't even remember how we got on against the other teams like Maldon and Pitsy and other teams. But you'll never forget uh, the great matches, which were obviously the finals. And all the boys associated with you. Simple as that.